this effect is pretty cool. I don't know what to call it, but that's what we're making today in Photoshop. Like a sci-fi digital optic effect. Maybe that will be the title. Anyway, let's get to it. All right, we're in Photoshop now. And you could really use any document size you want. I recommend using 300 DPI. That's the only thing I recommend. I'm using my classic document size. That's 16 by 20 inches at 300 DPI. So you can copy these settings if you want or just make whatever document size you'd like. And I just recommend keeping that resolution at 300. So let's just throw in an image in here to start. I got one off of Pexels or more than a few off of Pexels, which is a great free stock image site. Obviously go ahead and get you an image to start with. I'm gonna drag this one into my document document here and let's just get right into it. So the setup is pretty odd, but it's also pretty simple. So you want to make sure the first thing is that your image or your layer that you're working on is a smart object. Photoshop automatically made this a smart object, but if your layer isn't a smart object, just go ahead and right click on it and convert to smart object. So the first thing you want to do is duplicate your smart object with command J on your keyboard, then go up to filter pixelate mosaic. So the cell size here is pretty much anything you want it to be. You can get creative with this and obviously come back to it later since this is a smart object to experiment with different cell sizes, but generally something pretty large, like anywhere from like 50 to like, I don't know, 200 even is going to work for this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stick with maybe 105 here. I'll press OK on that. And the next thing we want to do is go up to filter, noise, and then median. This is actually a low key filter. I don't know why uh, it's not used more often, but it is pretty cool so anyway the radius size for the medium filter is also up to you obviously this is something you want to experiment with this is an experimental effect for my image I'm gonna go ahead and use around 40 pixels but again we can come back to this later I'm gonna go ahead and press ok on that now let's throw another filter on this we'll go back up to filter we're going to stylize and then to find edges and this is really cool. This is going to, you know, find the edges on your layer. And since we had those harsh edges from the mosaic and the medium filters, we get this really cool sort of sci-fi pixelated pattern here, which is the base of the effect that we're making. So next up, let's hit command I on our keyboard to invert this. Then let's go into the layer styles for this layer. So we'll double click that and open up the layer styles. And we can go ahead and drag the blend if slider for the current layer, the black blend if slider, just a little bit inwards to get uh, the black background pretty much set out of this. And now we have just that line pattern sort of overlaid on top of our original image. And honestly, this is pretty cool in itself since it keeps the original colors of the image intact, but it's just a little bit too muddy of an effect for me. So what I find takes this to the next level is when we put this layer in a group. So we do Command G to put that layer in a group, and then we could throw any layer styles we want on this. So any sort of glowy layer style like this one I have saved in my layer styles panel here, is gonna get that really glowy, cool sci-fi effect on these lines. So that's just a layer style that I had in the vault, but just in case you want to copy that, I'll go through these settings real quick right here. So it's just an inner glow. Uh, obviously, these settings are all you know interchangeable. You can mess around with these, but it's just an inner glow, a little gradient overlay, sort of yellow to white to blue. The main operator here though is the outer glow, which obviously is giving it that nice shiny blue glow. And then we have a few drop shadows on here, which is just supplementing that glow, but it's not really doing much. But yeah, you can copy those settings if you want. You can just make your own layer style with some simple outer and inner glow. Pretty simple stuff. So now is when we can get sort of to more experimenting with this. As you can see, we have pretty much the effect going on here, but it's a little bit overpowering over the image. So if I wanted to, I can go back into the layer styles of that smart object here by double clicking on that layer. And I can play with the same blend if slider to get more or less of an intense effect um, on this image. You can also hold down alt on your keyboard and click on this little triangle to split it. And now you can move these little two halves separately to get more of a blended fall off. So as you can see, once I start doing that, there's now more of a blurry fall off from those harsh edges. So you can go ahead and mess around with this as well. And that's pretty much the effect. It's really cool, very simple. We can also thicken up these lines a bit by going into filter, other, and then maximum. And this is going to make whatever is white on this layer bigger. So since the lines are white on this smart object layer here, once we activate this maximum filter, we can increase the sort of size of them by three pixels. So now the lines in here are three pixels thicker, which gives this effect affect some more body. Maybe I'll turn it down to two or something. And that's looking pretty damn good. And like I said, since this is a smart object, we can always go back into the filters that we put onto this previously and change any of the values that we want. So more specifically, the mosaic and the median values. Let's go ahead and open up the mosaic here and just turn the cell size up to like 200. Press OK on that. You're going to see that effect take place. As you can see, the grid here is now a lot bigger. Pretty cool effect and it's still sort of following the contours or the highlights of this image, which makes it a super sick effect. 
Now this is pretty cool on its own, but everything gets a little more cool once you introduce some texture. So that's what I find really tops off this effect is adding some texture and some grit to this. So you can add some noise to this if you want or drag on a photocopy or a paper texture on top of all this, set it to overlay or screen, anything of your choice really. And I'd also recommend doing some color correction here or some, I don't know, gradient maps or anything cool that you can do with the colors. But my preference would be to do that all in one, get the coloring and the texturing all locked in in one step. And there's a very easy way to do that, which I use pretty often, which is my template called Analog Looks, which is pretty much just like a photo treatment kit. So it has a ton of, I'll go into it right now. It has a ton of preset LUTs or color corrections and textures baked into the template. So it's pretty easy to choose what kind of textures you want and what kind of coloring you want on the image. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, and throw this into Analog Looks. So I'll put these two in a group and just drag that over to the Analog Looks document. And boom, look at that. That was very, very simple. And that's why I prefer this template rather than dragging in individually a ton of different textures and trying out a ton of different color corrections uh, because this template has it all, of course, baked in for you. You can choose from a ton of different LUTs and color corrections and also a ton of different textures. There's a scan texture somewhere in here as well, which I like to use. There's this cool halftone texture in here, which is sort of a Y2K look that I really like. I'm gonna go with this sort of scan lines texture since it matches the, uh, the effect that we're doing pretty well. But yeah, I don't want to dwell too much on the analog looks template. Of course, it's great. You can download this on my site, DuranSupply.com. I just wanted to show you just how much some color correction and texturing can level up this effect. Now we can also add a ton of really cool complementary effects to this. And there's a ton of variations that you can do with this setup that I'm going to show you in just a little bit. But for now, here's one of my favorites. You can actually go ahead and duplicate the group with the lines in it. So that's just the group that we put the layer styles on. I'm gonna keep working in the analog looks template document just because it looks so damn good. But anyway, let's go ahead and duplicate this group layer here with command J. It's gonna take a little bit to duplicate out because it has that smart object in it. And for whatever reason, Photoshop redoes all the effects on the smart object once you duplicate it. But anyway, once you have that duplicated out, go ahead and do command E on your keyboard to merge that group. Then let's go up to filter, blur, and motion blur. And we'll set the angle of this to zero and the distance you could play with, put it wherever you want it. But once I put it up pretty high, we get that really cool sort of lens flare look on these lines here. And it's just sort of another cherry on top of this pretty nice sci-fi looking digital <laughs> interface, whatever effect. So I'll press okay on that. And that's looking pretty damn cool. So here's before the motion blur and here is the after. Very, very nice supplementary effect. Okay, I wanted to get the texturing and the supplementary effects like the blur out of the way because that's what's really gonna take this effect to the next level and make it really cool. But there are a ton of variations that we can do with the actual base of this effect. So I'm gonna show you a few of those pretty fun variations that we can do with the base of this effect. And I want you to keep in mind that it all really comes together once you do the final sort of processing on this, like those supplementary effects, adding things like text or logos or sci-fi elements in here, adding the blur and the textures. All that is a great way to really finish off the effect, but let's explore some different variations we can do with the actual base of this effect. So let's start off with just our image here again. We're gonna do Command J to duplicate this again. Pretty similar process here. Let's go up to filter, again down to pixelate, but this time let's choose crystallize. Now we'll set the cell size of this pretty high up, maybe somewhere around like the 130s, 150s, something like that. Again, this is up to your experimentation. I'll press okay on that. Then pretty much same deal here. We'll go up to filter, stylize and find edges. Then we'll do command I on our keyboard to invert this. And then it's the exact same process as that first one we did. And this one is really, really cool. It's sort of like lightning or I don't really know what you'd call it. Pretty nice variation we have for that effect here. And we can totally go back into the crystallize filter and turn up the cell size if we'd like to maybe something like, I don't know, 220. And that is also a pretty cool effect. Really does look like lightning sort of coming across the image. Now back to the original effect that we did with the mosaic. We can also just turn off the median filter if we'd like and keep those really harsh edges on that mosaic sort of pixel effect. And this is also super cool. This is one of my favorites to get sort of a gridded look on the image. It bunches up around the highlights of the image and around the contours of your subject, which I think is just fantastic. We can even throw things like a crosshair sort of element into this group with that layer style. And it makes it look really cool, especially with this 
little text here, that 1x zoom level just adds to the effect. You know what, that actually looks a lot like the wrong symbol that we don't want in there. So let's go ahead and move that somewhere else. All right, cool. Yeah, we can even add elements from my sci-fi elements kit, which is new on my website if you wanna pick this up. So this is just a vector file from Illustrator. I could go ahead and just drag that into the Photoshop document here and place this wherever I want. And it is instantly cool when paired with this effect. This one's really cool. I could just drag that straight from Illustrator into Photoshop, scale that down, and boom really pairs well with this effect and again i can go ahead and add that motion blur by duplicating out this group and then merging it get that motion blur dialed in and then drag this whole thing into my analog looks photo treatment template to get that really cool finished textured effect on this image now let's go over one more variation that i think is really fun and cool i'll go back into my document here i'll start with a new image here since i think this works best on portraits so i'm going to use this image right here first thing you want to do is desaturate this image this image is black and white so obviously i don't really need to do that but if you're using a colored image then just go to command u on your keyboard and drag the saturation all the way down and press ok on that the first step is to duplicate that image so before you do anything duplicate your image layer and then we're going to do all the effects on that duplicate layer so i'm gonna do command j to duplicate this and then take the effect off of that layer so now we have our original image layer and then the duplicate layer that we're going to do all the effects on so on this duplicate layer you want to desaturate it then we're going to go up to filter noise and then median and we're going to drag the radius up so we can see pretty much just the contours of this image so we're getting it really really soft so around 50 or so works for this image i'll press ok on that and now we want to add a gaussian blur so go up to filter blur Gaussian blur. I, I don't know how that's pronounced. I'm not going to lie. People pronounce it gauge. I, I don't know. I'm calling it Gaussian blur. And that's what I've done the entirety of my YouTube career. So to me, this is Gaussian blur. So let's go ahead and click on Gaussian blur and set the radius to something pretty tiny, maybe around 15 to 20. I'm going to go with 15 here. Then let's go up to image adjustments and slap on a posturize effect the levels are something you're going to want to play with to get more of an experimental look on this you can change it from anywhere from 4 to 20. i'm going to go with around 16 here and press ok and you can already see where this is going so let's go up to filter stylize fine edges then do command i on our keyboard to invert and then we want these lines a bit more prominent so we'll go up to image adjustments again and this time choose a threshold filter and just drag this ladder until i can see those lines pretty clearly and this is a cool effect in itself you can add some glow on this and call it a day but just to keep it more in line with the other effects that we've been doing i'm going to go ahead and open up the layer styles of this layer do the same thing to drag the blacks in a little bit so that we lose the black background press enter on that then put this in a group with command g and on this group i can throw on any layer style that i want like this glowy one that we've been using and that gives us this really cool sort of sci-fi contoured effect i'm going to mess around with the layer styles a bit to get it a little bit more in tune with the image and this is pretty cool but we are sort of losing sight of the original image if you want of course you can keep it like this but here's something you can do to sort of bring back the details we had in the original image so on this top group layer the group that we have all the layer styles on we're going to open up the layer styles of that group and then in the blend if panel down here you want to go to the underlying layer blend if slider and choose the black and just drag that in a little bit until we can reveal some of the details from the original image and again we can split this by holding down alt on our keyboard alter option and then clicking on this triangle to split it and then now we can drag the ends of this individually to get a smoother roll off of the blending of this again if i want to make the lines thicker i can go onto this smart object here and just throw on a maximum filter which is in other and then maximum and make these lines thicker by one or two pixels and from here we can start experimenting more we can add some textures onto this you can experiment with some supplemental effects like some blur on this and we can also go back into any of these filters here to change the values and get a bit of a different effect so i recommend playing with the posturize mostly because that is going to control pretty much how many lines there are on this effect so if you want fewer lines you want to choose a lesser value for the posturize and more lines you choose a bigger value if you want you can also turn the opacity of the original image down to see more of those lines sort of come through and get more of a prominent effect on that front again can also duplicate out this group layer and add on some blurs to this like a motion blur or even a gaussian blur okay and here's what that looks like once i throw it all into my analog looks template really interesting stuff here i want to see what you guys can make with this okay and that's a wrap thank you guys so much for watching this was completely an experimental thing that i found just messing around and i do a lot of that so let me know if you want more videos like this where i just show you some 
odd experimental effects that you can use on your images and whatnot. Be sure to subscribe if you learn anything from this video and like the video if you like the video. I do post these videos every week, so if you want to become a more well-versed designer, hit that subscribe button and I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace out.